Love staying informed? Subscribe now and get unlimited access to local news, weather, and sports for just 99 cents a month for your first three months at DuluthNewsTribune.news slash join. Read every story, listen to every podcast, and download the apps that keep you informed on the go 24 hours a day. So head to DuluthNewsTribune.news slash join right now to subscribe. What are you waiting for? You'll get three months of local news for just 99 cents a month at DuluthNewsTribune.news slash join. Hello, Northlanders. It's Thursday, February 9th. I'm Wyatt Buckner with your Duluth News Tribune Minute, presented by Minnesota Power Employees Credit Union. The average MPECU member saves over $785 a year in better rates and lower fees. And with MPECU, every ATM is your ATM. With their free checking program, you get ATM fee reimbursements at any ATM anywhere in the U.S., Check out Minnesota Power Employees Credit Union services online at mpecu.com or visit their offices in downtown Duluth, Arrowhead Road, or Miller Trunk Highway. Now, here's a look at today's headlines. An unusually warm January has left Lake Superior and the rest of the Great Lakes mostly ice-free. As of Wednesday, Lake Superior was just 11% ice covered, according to estimates by the Great Lakes Environmental Research Laboratory. Usually, by this point in February, Lake Superior would be about 35% ice covered. All told, only about 13.5% of the Great Lakes is covered by ice compared to about 35% on average by this point in February. A satellite photograph taken Wednesday shows most of Lake Superior entirely ice-free. Thunder Bay, Schwamigan Bay, and the Twin Ports Harbor show solid ice, but even the usually ice-covered areas of the Apostle Islands don't show as much solid ice as usual. The Madeline Island Ferry was still running this week because ice between Bayfield and La Pointe still isn't thick enough for safe travel by vehicles. Ice formation on the Great Lakes is pretty simple, entirely driven by air temperature and wind. Cold, calm nights form more ice. The average temperature in Duluth in January was 17.7 degrees, according to National Weather Service data, 6.5 degrees warmer than normal keeping the Big Lake's water temperatures above the freezing point. For Lake Superior, February is usually the month when major ice formation occurs, on average increasing from about 20% to nearly 50% ice cover over the month. Peak ice cover, a bit more than 50% of the lake covered on average, usually occurs in early March. But a warm February can thwart ice formation and keep much of the lake open. More open water in winter can mean more evaporation from Lake Superior, which would reduce water levels. Open water also can mean more chances for lake effect snow when cold winds blow across the relatively warm surface waters of the lake. A South Range man has been found guilty of aiding in the dismembering of a St. Paul homicide victim and disposing of his remains in Lake Superior. A Cook County jury on Wednesday convicted Robert Thomas West, 42, of felony counts of aiding an offender as an accomplice after the fact of second-degree murder and interference with the dead body. West was the first of three people to face charges related to the death of Richard Ricky Anthony Balsimo Jr., 34 of St. Paul, in June 2020. Balsimo was reportedly shot in a moving car in the Twin Cities before his body was driven north, mutilated at a Douglas County property, and disposed of by West off the shore of Grand Portage. West's verdict came from a 12-member jury after a roughly two-week trial in Grand Marais. The panel spent less than two hours deliberating. The alleged shooter, Jacob Colt Johnson, 36 of Superior, awaits a July trial on account of intentional second-degree murder. A Duluth woman, Tommy Lynn Hintz, 32, was the first to be convicted when she pleaded guilty last June to aiding an offender. A sentencing date was not immediately scheduled for West. West still faces additional charges in Douglas County of mutilating a corpse, harboring or aiding a felon, and possession of a firearm by a felon. Now for a sneak peek of an upcoming story, here's Dan Williamson with a special guest. Thanks, Wyatt. I'm here with one of our colleagues, Duluth News Tribune Features reporter Melinda Levine. We're speaking on Zoom. And Melinda, you have a story that you're working on for Saturday's print edition of the Duluth News Tribune and a story you'll be able to find online prior at DuluthNewsTribune.com. The story involves a local businesswoman who's adding another business to the mix. What else can you share about this story? Thanks, Dan. So local businesswoman Bailey Arrow Hutchins, she pivoted her photography business and her glamping cabin business and is now working in curated gift boxes. White Spruce Market started with a hyper-local focus using regional products from companies like Duluth Coffee Company, Juniper Blue Designs, Wild Country Maple Syrup, and more in carefully curated gift solutions. With one box, you're supporting eight small business brands, said Arrow Hutchins as a huge impact for our local small business economy. 
basically linen boxes featuring goods and different themes such as brunch, foodies, new baby, and with items such as keychains, journals, lip balm, cheese, cardamom cookies, or caramels. The business has expanded over the last couple of years, and now coming up, they've got the launch of a new website, and they're planning an expansion on their location. Is there something in particular that you took away from this story? What I took away from the story was, I think one of the things that they're leaning into with this business is how cool it is to receive something like thoughtfully curated, thoughtfully packaged, thoughtfully sent. All of their gift boxes have handwritten notes. There's like really cool, aesthetically pleasing little bits and pieces like non-food and food items. I actually received one of these boxes. It was like five years ago. And it was just such a delight to open, like to get like this surprise. And yeah, that tactile surprise, I think, and that personal touch was really charming to me. Very cool. Is there something in particular you hope our audience takes away from this story? I hope our audience can take away that White Spruce Market is kind of a good example of how, you know, Duluth and the region really works together to lift each other up in business and more. Melinda, as always, we appreciate your time. Again, you can find this story in Saturday's print edition of the Duluth News Tribune, as well as online prior at DuluthNewsTribune.com. Wyatt, back to you. Thanks, Dan. Now here's a look at your forecast brought by the News Tribune's 20 Under 40 Awards. Weather for the Duluth area today, looking at areas of light flurries in the morning and then windy conditions with mostly cloudy skies throughout the rest of the afternoon. Highs in the mid 30s today, but dropping down to the single digits tonight. Still breezy for Friday, but sunshine and colder. Temperatures into the 20s, warming back up into the mid 30s this weekend. I'm Storm Tracker meteorologist Robert Pointer. Thank you to the 20 Under 40 Awards for their support. Now is your chance to nominate someone younger than 40 who's making a positive impact in our Northland. Nominations are open through February 28th. Submit yours at DuluthNewsTribune.com slash 20 under 40. Reporting for today's episode was done by John Myers and Tom Olson. Thank you for listening to the Luth News Tribune Minute. Have a great day, and we'll see you back here tomorrow.